Hey, we've got another repair video and it's one of my favorite repair videos because I did it right. It's going to be a long lasting repair and we even made some nice updates. I say we, but I really mean I. One thing here that I will tell you is I love my Heiko soldering iron. It heats up tremendously quick as you'll see towards the end of the video. It's very precise, it maintains its temperature, and it's just well built. And honestly guys, let's face it, it is a bit sexy. Yellow, blue, what else is there not to like? Two buttons, very easy to operate. No, this is not, um, uh, I'm not trying to have it, you know, publicize, I don't get any money from Heiko. I'm just telling you, compared to my other soldering irons, this has been great. But the big problem as you saw there is that DIN connector just comes off. Uh, it's plastic tabs, that's what held it in. And honestly, it's a bit poor for everything else that the design, the architecture, the way that this works, um, for everything else that, that this has going for it. That's the one big drawback. And it's kind of a big drawback because if you're transporting this back and forth, like me, I plug it in and out often, the last thing you want is to compromise that connector. And that's one of the first things that, I say one of the first things, but it's really the only thing that broke. And it's a really big deal because there's five, six wires behind it. If you accidentally plug it in and it touches something metal, you could short circuit and then you could lose your, your soldering iron. Um, and, and this was not cheap for a soldering iron. This, I think, I, you know, when I bought it, I think I paid over 200 for it brand new. You're seeing some white stuff um, around the DIN connector. That was from an earlier repair. As I said, we're going to repair this thing the right way. I think that was super glue at one point. Clearly, it didn't hold. And the bottom left-hand side, and you can pause this video if you'd like to see, this is the actual pinout. So the bottom left-hand side shows pins one through six and how three and ground are connected by one mega ohm resistor. You're going to see in the video uh, this as well. But if you do have an FX888D soldering station, I thought this pinout would be helpful for you as well. So the first thing that we have to do is purchase one and it's already purchased. So the magic of video and waiting a week, I went online. This particular one I got because of the surface area on in the front, because that's how I'm going to make sure it's secure. I'm going to um, place this in the front that will prevent it from pushing through. So that as you can imagine, if I'm pushing, which is the most force, which is in not out, right? That's going to ensure that most of that force, if not all of it, is going to be taken on that face plate, which is thick, it's plastic, it's secured in the top and on the bottom. The next thing that I need to do, and I've already figured out what type of uh, actually bolts, as you'll see, I need is I actually need to widen the holes for the bolts to fit through. And the drill, as you'll notice from the uh, video, is actually going counterclockwise, and that's intentional. That's not accidental, so don't blow up my comment section. The reason why you do this is typically you can go, I'm eating less metal as I'm drilling through, right? Uh, and that happens because you can see how thin the sides are. And the last thing I want to do is um, drill so fast that that uh, end counterclock, sorry, end clockwise, that it des destroys or, um, or breaks apart the metal or disforms it in any way. So if you go backwards, you're going to eat a little bit less metal and it goes slower and you can see it's much more controlled when you're trying to drill through. Um, if you're wondering, uh, that is uh, my grandpa's uh, lovely pliers. Um, I've had that for years. He's passed now, uh, but his name was Lek. And so he'd have his name on there because he did a lot of work with other technicians and he didn't want his stuff disappearing. So I love to use his tools just knowing that he used them years ago. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is mark where I want to drill the holes. Um, you can definitely see, and I'll do, um, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit in a moment, but you can see that this is not going to be perfectly centered. There's going to be gaps, but that's okay because I'm going to use the drill and where that bolt goes, it won't matter. So you see a little gap on the left hand side where that um, bolt's going to go. No biggie. So put a nice center punch. And as you'll see in a moment, um, as I'm drilling through, it's going to uh, be perfectly aligned so that when we put that DIN connector on and then we put those bolts on, it'll be really, really nice and secure. One thing about this project is when I 
originally did a repair. It was really half-assed, right? Um, this time you can see I'm really taking my time. I've thought through what is it that I want to do and how do I want to make sure I do it right. I could have found a clever way to reuse the connector. 100%. There are many ways. Um, but at the end of the day, I said I want, you know, the main uh, purpose of this was to do it right the first time, right? And as you get a little older, you get a little wiser, you realize, okay, if I'm going to have to repair it twice, why not do it right the first time? So that's really what, what you're seeing in this video. Is, is, is really my take on um, really improving, I would say, uh, the, not only the connector, but also uh, on a couple other things here. All right, you can see here that we've got the two bolts ready to go, and I'm gonna screw them in, and I've got the nuts in the back. And of course, because that surface area of that DIN connector, again, it's made out of metal <laughs> for obvious reasons, and it takes quite a bit of that surface area up, that front plate will take all of the force, um, whether you're inserting or removing that DIN connector from that soldering iron. So this is great, right? It's not just replacing it with another plastic piece, even the exact same piece, it truly is making an improvement. So hopefully Heiko um, makes an improvement on their second revision. That would be awesome because I think this is the number one weakness that I've had um, with it. And that's it. There is another recommendation as I'll do shortly, but this is by far the number one. Now when I insert this, you'll notice that the screws um, hit the plastic jacket around the perimeter of the DIN connector or the ground. Um, didn't anticipate that, but of course, no big deal. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of area on the left and right side where those screws are. And there I am kind of removing the last bit after testing it a couple of times. And as you'll notice now, uh, no biggie. Uh, it inserts just fine. One of the challenges I always have with these types of DIN connectors, unlike USB-C, which are, you know, bi-directional, right? doesn't matter if you insert them uh, upside down or right side up, they, they, they will work. These DIN connectors, PS2 connectors, SCSI, right? All of these types of computer issues, um, they only insert one way. They're keyed, as they say, to one way. Um, so I'm going to, I can't fix it here. But I can do one thing, give a nice visual indication. Um, because otherwise, if you don't and you're not paying attention or you're not careful, you can actually bend the connectors or twist them. So I went to my wife's closet. Nobody let her know this. And I found some very bright pinkish, <laughs> reddish uh, nail polish. So I'm going to put a dab on that DIN connector at the very top. And that will let me know this is the top. Um, you can make any markings or indentations you'd like, of course. Um, this is just for me. I know that that's the top. And I let this sit for 24 hours to dry. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is make sure that we have the wiring uh, mapped to the correct um, pin so that when we switch over to the new DIN 5 pin connector that it is correctly mapped. Otherwise, we're gonna have issues. So I grab my notepad and all I'm gonna do here is identify a couple of things. The pin number, I'm going to draw and jot down the colors of the wire and, and the ground one you can see it's green and yellow uh, and then of course that wouldn't be sufficient if you were just to follow that because as you'll notice there are two white and two black wires 
Uh, however, they follow to the circuit board, and on that circuit board, they have markings like SE1 and SE2. So you'll notice a couple of things. Not only am I jotting that down, um, the other thing that I'm doing is I am checking like five times. It's so easy for your eyes to, you know, you think you're following one of the white wires, they jump or they twist and you follow it and all of a sudden you've mapped it to the wrong pin. So it's incredibly important that you check your work. This is one of the most important aspects, I think, of any good um, follow through on projects, especially on the engineering when you're looking at diagrams. Be absolutely certain that it follows through a hundred percent. So I'm going to do it three or four times where I'm going to grab the wire and feel all the way across, visually confirm. Uh, and then uh, sometimes what I like to do is actually I kind of read it backwards, right? So I go, okay, what's my pin? What color should it be? And other times I'll look at the um, diagram. What does it say? Just to ensure that I'm not reading too fast or that I'm not um, in any way making a mistake because it could be costly, right? You accidentally miswire. For example, the ground goes to a sensor, which this soldering iron has, right? Or it goes to the heating element. And not only can you break that, you can actually damage the circuit board. And I would imagine if I had to replace the circuit board, which is the main components that I'm handling here, it would be uh, pretty dang expensive. Alright, so the next thing that I need to do is take a look at the um, wires. So first, I've got to go ahead and cramp the rest of these wires off the old DIN connector. And as you can see here, there's something interesting. Now, if you looked at the diagram before, you'll notice that between ground and pin 3, there is a 1 mega ohm resistor. So we got to take this off and put this on the new connector. I thought about just replacing it, but there's nothing wrong with this, so there's no need to. I've got plenty of them. So I figured just reuse what we can.
If I did have to make a critique, um, I was surprised at how this was soldered onto uh, the ground pin. It was, I would say, kind of decent. You can see that pin three there, it's really soldered quite well. So, you know, not going to make fun, right? I mean, it is what it is. It just, of everything else that's just perfect, it's the one thing that I'm like, hmm, could this have been soldered better? Is there another area that this resistor could have been put? I mean, maybe it's dissipating enough heat they wanted it away from the board. I just find it quite interesting. Uh, again, minor, but the, you know, actual electrical engineers that designed this know better than me. Um, because while I have an engineering degree, I didn't design this. So I'm sure there's a purpose and a reason for everything. So I'm going to prepare some more of these wires and then we're going to start soldering. So the next thing here is to remove that one mega ohm resistor from the ground and so what I'm going to do here is hold it with the claps because I don't want my hands anywhere near that torch and then use these bent needle nose pliers to put some pressure on that one mega ohm resistor and then I'll heat up that contact point where it's soldered very quickly so as not to burn that resistor to a crisp and then put that back onto that new lovely DIN 8 pin connector.
Now, since I don't have a soldering iron and I need to solder, there are a couple of clever ways to do this. Uh, let me tell you the first uh, method and the method that I chose. And one thing to keep in mind, this was an option that I chose. I know what I'm doing. It's very safe. It's in a controlled environment. And we're very much talking about low voltage. I measured beforehand. So it's really critical to understand that this is the way that I chose. If you have a better way or if you have a soldering iron additional one, uh, that's awesome. So what I ended up doing was actually plugged in the soldering iron uh, since all the wires were already plugged in and conducting and let the soldering iron get to the temperature and then I would solder two or three wires after I unplug the soldering iron. Once the soldering iron got a little cold, I needed to plug it back in, wait till it heated up to the temperature that was required, and then I unplugged the soldering and then finished soldering the rest of the wires. It's important to unplug because A, you could conduct electricity. Um, the other thing is, remember, the soldering iron is grounded and has quite a bit of uh, wires going through it. So what you don't want to do is use your soldering iron and touch <laughs> touch a wire or something and short circuit and then you again lose your soldering iron. So that's what you see me doing in this video. So uh, now is the super easy part, putting it back together, putting the four screw and the pads in and uh, being able to use it. So um, it's been uh, great repairing this the right way. Uh, it took a little long to get the parts, but hey, when it's done right, it's right. And here we are, the FX-888D Heiko soldering iron with what I would call an upgraded, much more substantial, secure um six pin din connector um, and a marker on that soldering iron that says uh, or indicates the proper orientation to limit guessing bending pins etc you can see how quick the soldering iron heats up it went from 250 and right now it's over 520 degrees fahrenheit so this is the amazing part about the um, Heiko soldering iron and now these two, well, one major upgrade and one feature. So maybe, maybe Heiko will listen. Someone will say, hey, great idea, um, and implement this design uh, in their version two or three, whatever they're at. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe. It lets me know that people are interested, motivates me, motivates my wife to say, hey, get out of my face. 
and go fix something. You've got a bunch of followers. They probably want to see something. So thank you very much.